Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is I am, I am Michael Golub. Uh, I am uh, yet another developer who is working mostly, mostly with C++. And I want to tell you a story about a certain part of uh, Boost libraries. So let me tell you how it started. I am also a video gamer, so once I was interested uh, what library is used uh, for pathfinding by one of my favorite open source games. I looked at the code, there was no library, there was a, a specific, a specific uh, implementation in the code. So I looked at another game and there was a slightly different implementation of the same algorithm in the code, again, no library. So I asked myself, uh, why so? There should be a way to implement uh, the pathfinding algorithms in a generic way. So I started thinking about it, about how you, what concepts you need to do it. Then I realized there is, uh, that we have a generic library for pathfinding, which is called Boost Graph. So I asked myself why uh, so many projects that need pathfinding don't use it. So why is it why is it important? Why should they care? Uh, well, there is a principle of uh, known as no row loops that was voiced by uh, uh, Sean Parent in uh, his famous talk almost uh, ten yeah like ten years ago, and we still most of us still don't write code like we should, and we have lo row loops everywhere. The basic idea is if you have a loop in, in the middle of your code, it's probably some algorithm, you should extract it to function, give it a name. If there is already a library with this algorithm, you should use the library. Makes sense, right? So you don't, uh, you, you don't want to re-implement something that was, that was implemented by everyone as part of his university training again and again. Uh, so, why do, why do we love, what we love about uh, STL uh, so much? It works with iterators and iterators are great. Why iterators are great? Because uh, any container, you have an algorithm and it works on any container as long as you can provide uh, iterators that satisfy uh, certain requirements. You have a C style uh, array, no problem. Pointer is also an iterator. Uh, so can we do something like this, something as generic for graphs and for pathfinding? Uh, so I already say the graphs and pathfinding a few times. Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, get to the formal definition. Mathematicians think the graph is a set of vertices and the set of edges and every element in set of edges is a pair of vertices. There can be directional graphs that could be uh, non-directional graph where, uh, you know, if A connects to B, B connects to A, or it could be only in one direction. There is a, something called bipartite graph when you have two disjoint sets of vertices and edges are between them. There are all kinds of graphs. But uh, in general, it's set of vertices, set of edges. That's simple. Uh, in uh, in practice, uh, mathematicians can uh, could, can think about abstract edges, abstract vertices, uh, but it's not very practical. Uh, in uh, more practical pro, uh, pro, pro in more practical cases, edges and vertices represent something. For example. Uh, in this uh, map, in this map of major uh, train uh, train uh, connections of uh, Spain, vertices are cities and uh, 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 edges are train routes. And of course, uh, edges have properties like uh, track lengths, travel time, uh, construction date, you name it. Uh, many uh, thing, many things in the world uh, can be represented uh, by graphs. For example, this like this simple circuit on the right is also a graph. 
but remember I said that I started with games and that, uh, that's what got me interested in the topic. Uh, pathfinding is very important in uh, video games and uh, one of the most important cases is uh, pathfinding on grids. You could have a hexagonal board and you have uh, for every point you have six neighbors. You could have a square board for every point you have four neighbors or eight neighbors if you have if you count diagonally. You could have uh, you sometimes sometimes have uh, three dimensional grids. For example, on on the on this picture, you see that uh, you have uh, ladders that uh, that connects uh, up to the level uh, below with level above. And uh, for all such cases, one of the most important algorithms is how do you get from point A to point B while while following the rules. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, for graphs like this, for a graph like this map, a natural way to represent uh, uh, a natural way to represent the map is a list of vertices, a list of cities in our case, and a list of connections. Okay, because uh, there is no general geometric pattern like uh, that says. Some from this coordinate you connect to this coordinate, right? You, you actually have a network of links that connect basically everything to everything. But here, your neighbors are defined by coordinates. So the natural way to represent the neighbors is just don't represent it, it's calculated. It can be calculated on the fly. It's not as, uh, or maybe it is calculated by the properties of the vertex itself, but not uh, of the edge. You have some, for example, in uh, here, you have some impossible tiles but it is a property of the tile itself, not, uh, not the edge between them. Uh, another uh, common representation of uh, graphs is of course uh, adjacency matrix where for each pair of vertices, you store, a, you store a value that says whether there is a connection, if so, it contains the properties of the connection. Obviously for a grid like this, storing a matrix uh, which uh, contains every position by every position is not practical. So, uh, so let's talk what is pathfinding. You have a graph, you have a vertex on graph, you have another vertex on graph, you want to know and uh, edges on graph have cost. Cost to travel from one point to another and you want to find the cheapest route from one point to another. Uh, in a more general case, you may find you may want you may be interested in the best uh, pass from one point to multiple points, or maybe from a set of sources to set of destinations. Finding all points within a given range, many of the many uh, many uh, different cases, but the simplest case is from point to point. Uh, we have a set of uh, well-known algorithms and a good understanding of when to use uh, which uh, when to use every algorithm. We have BFS, which works great when all edges have the same weight. That's simple, simple search. Dijkstra works when edges have different weights. A star, it is like Dijkstra. But you also have a heuristic function that estimates the, dis the remaining distance to your uh, to the destination. Uh, so, of course, the, the algorithms are generic and can be uh, applied to almost any graph. And don't and the algorithm itself does not depend on the representation. The actual algorithm logic uh, doesn't care whether you store the connections as adjacency list or adjacency matrix or calculate them on the fly from uh, grid. Uh, now the said uh, the set part, uh, there is no A star in STL. Uh, there is a proposal for STD graphs, which is currently, uh, which is currently 
just a proposal. There is no work in implementation, and uh, the people in library study group are still debating uh, how how they will how they can make it great. Uh, uh, but if we Google for generic post finding, you can see that Boost Graph uh, support uh, Boost Graph has it since Boost one dot eighteen, which is like over twenty years ago. It was uh, before C plus plus eleven. It was uh, it's about uh, when STL became standard. Slightly afterwards. Um, uh, the sad part that boost a star search receives 11 parameters and it can be confusing and when I tried to look uh, the, uh, the examples with, uh, which are slightly easier to understand or more generic than boost uh, documentation I found a lot of like this like somebody is asking why he can't understand uh, anything from uh, boost uh, exa uh, boost documentation or for example, this blog, somebody on Google Summer of Code was tasked with maintaining something that uses Boost Graph. Well, so it's, this blog starts with day one, day two, then it goes to another week with Boost Graph. So it's a big library, which uh, it takes some time to learn. And sometimes it's, as you could already guess, it could be easier to, to hand code a buggy solution by yourself, but it will be much faster than understanding it, at least in some cases. Uh, so we will try to understand uh, why, uh, why it is hard to use it, uh, how we can use it anyway, and maybe even get some ideas of what we want from STD graph in next standard, next, next standard. Uh, but so before we start, uh, before we start blaming uh, the confusing uh, library, uh, let's uh, think a bit about the inherent com inherent complexity of uh, the problem. Like no matter how you uh, too hard you try, uh, the problem won't be sim simpler than uh, it is uh, than the actual problem. You can make it harder, but you can't make it simpler if the problem is hard the problem is hard so the input is a bit unusual and not something that uh, stl algorithms are used to receive so in simple you have a start vertex where you can sort the for the parse from you have end vertex in general case it could be a different termination condition uh, but Let's start simple and vertex. And you have some representation of graph. You have uh, something that defines which uh, what uh, the list of vertices and the list of edges. For given vertex, there must be a way to find the neighbors. Otherwise, you can't find the path. So uh, your your implementation can be simpler can be simpler than uh, so, uh, than uh, something that accepts such concepts. Um, uh, some other cons uh, considerations uh, uh, for each uh, for each edge, you need at least one property, which is usually called weight, or the cost to travel from one point to another. Uh, and for A star, you also need the function that estimates uh, the remaining distance from one point to another. Uh, in simple out, in the simplest case, uh, the output uh, is uh, just the distance. But in more generic uh, and practical case, it is the path. For every point along the path, you want to know how to, uh, what was the previous stop. So you want to actually reconstruct the path and not uh, just uh, know uh, the length of it. Uh, what is curious in this case is that uh, the topology of output is the same as input. You have a set of vertices and for every vertex, for every point along the path, 
you want to know how you got there. So you need your output is a container of the same size, of the same shape as the input graph. Uh, the funny thing that you don't really need the vertices of the input graphs. You are more interested in edges. So uh, the value you place the values per vertex, and your input is list of edges per vertex, and the wait for okay let's okay let's look at this very simple example uh here we have four vertices and four edges uh, vertices are labeled with letters we have w we have m we have t we have f and you want to find the shortest path from w to f okay you have four edges represented with lines every line every uh, and the weight of each line is uh, is marked one five two and ten so you want to know how to get from w to f the fastest way and how fast is this is it uh, we will use the extra algorithm uh, which is uh, the classical algorithm to use when you don't have a geometrical uh, heuristic function that estimates the remaining cost uh, so uh, how does it work you have a priority queue of uh, uh, nodes not yet uh, of vertices not yet investigated and uh, the priority is the known the distance to a given point uh, and you always pop the lowest priorities lowest cost uh, uh, vertex from the list you investigate you investigate all the neighbor all the connections and you put the connections to the queue until you go get to, your, to the destination uh, this problem also uses what is called graph coloring so for every vertex you store uh, some information about the search progress in our case we will say that uh, vertexes that are uh, not investigated, uh, not uh, yet reached. Uh, oops, uh, a white uh, vertices that uh, are uh, in the queue, but we don't yet. Uh, we, but we are not sure about the actual path that are not fully investigated are gray, and fully investigated vertices are black. So. We put the start, uh, we, uh, we initialize the answers in the green circles. Here you have the distance, initialize it to infinity. In the blue circle, you have the, uh, the predecessor, uh, which is initialized to the vertex itself. Uh, so we put the initial, uh, we put uh, the initial, uh, uh, <coughs> We put the starting vertex to the priority queue. We pop it. Then we pop it. We look at the neighbors, and we put both neighbors to the uh, to the priority queue. Here the distance is one for m. The distance is far for t. So we mark this vertex as we are we are done with it. We put those vertices to the list. We mark the shortest known yet distance. We save it inside some container. And now we, are, we mark them gray. Now we have next duration. We pop the first, the highest priority item from the queue, which is M. So we investigate M. Uh, we look at all the neighbors. But if the neighbor is already black, there is nothing to do. So here we have one neighbor, which is F. So we say, okay, we, uh, the distance so far is 11 and we will put it to the priority queue. Now the first item in the queue is a T. We look at it, there are two neighbors. Uh, this one is already black, not interesting. This one is not black. So we say, hey, we now have a better pass. Instead of 11, we have a pass of five plus two, seven, uh, which is nicer. Uh, we put 
this information to the priority queue. A proper optimized, uh, a proper optimized algorithm uh, should remove the previous uh, entry from the queue. Uh, but uh, a naive, not optimized algorithm will simply ignore the item that you pop from the queue if it's already black because you already know a better pass. But proper optimization uh, requires you to actually pop it. Now we pop our destination from the queue. And we know that we, it is the best pass because everything, uh, everything shorter was already examined. It's uh, simple, everyone heard about it in university, in some book. Everyone implemented it and everyone keeps implementing it because the library implementation is not so easy to use and not well, and also not widely known. So here we have the result. And once again, we the input as part of the input, we provide the, a way to get the edges. And the output is distance to a certain node and the predecessor. So you know that the distance to, uh, to, uh, to this from here to here is seven. And to get to, uh, you get to F from T, you get to T from W. This is the path. So in this simple case, it was it is uh, the solution is obvious even without algorithms, but uh, it, but in more general case you could have a large number of nodes in the priority queue at uh, any given point. So some important uh, some interesting observations. Uh, remember, as the transform, you receive a con you receive a range. And you output to a, and you get an output iterator, and uh, you output what you output is basically a container of the same size of the input. This is a bit similar because you have a graph and uh, with a given set of vertices, and you output uh, the answer for the same vertices. Uh, Unlike the transform, uh, unlike, unlike, unlike the transform, the input is not dimensional. So you have, so you have uh, neighbors and you don't have a simple plus plus to traverse everything. Uh, what's interesting is that STD transform at every point during execution uh, remembers one uh, location in input at one location and out, right? So, Put from here, from here to here, then from here to here, right? Only one location in input, only one location in output. Uh, uh, for uh, this algorithm, we remember a location, uh, multiple locations inside the queue. And for each, okay, uh, for each such location, we uh, we must uh, know to find the matching position in in our input graph in the output for predecessors in the output for uh, the distances which is interesting if you look at stl uh, algorithms in stl algorithms like transform which receive multiple containers during the run uh, they keep only one iter uh, one iterator inside each container. Algorithms like search, uh, sure, they remember the partition points uh, in multiple cases, in multi in multiple places. Like you partition it, you partition it, you solve it recursively. So you have multiple iterators uh, during the solution process, but in only one container. Here you have multiple uh, containers and you have matching positions inside such containers uh, which uh, means that using iterators in for every using uh, iterators for everyone means that inside the queue uh, you must just, if you use iterators and not index here f is like index uh, you must store Whereas if in F inside the graph, whereas F inside the first output container, where is it inside the second? So 
uh, suddenly using something that uses looks like uh, index looks nicer and cheaper uh, than using an actual iterator. Isn't it uh, any questions so far? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, to illustrate uh, to illustrate uh, what is uh, wait I have some question something in chat so I guess there are some questions. No. Uh -huh. no. Ah, okay, no, whatever. Uh, so uh, let's look at very simple uh, problem. We have a, an amp, we have a chess board of size n by n. Okay, we have a knight. Knight's move is either uh, two squares direct, uh, horizontally, one vertically, or two squares vertically, one horizontally in any, in any direction. Uh, so you have eight possible squares in the middle of the board, slightly less when you are close to the, uh, to the edge. Uh, the simplest uh, problem that uh, you can solve is uh, the minimum number of uh, night moves from uh, one position to another. Uh, slightly harder position, uh, uh, slightly harder and different uh, uh, question could be uh, find the set of fields reachable within uh, a limited number of moves. Uh, you can extend it, for example, it's not just in board end on end, but you also have a list of uh, unreachable squares uh, be, uh, because they are occupied by, friend, uh, by uh, the pieces of the same side, for example. Or you could, uh, you could even uh, uh, make it harder uh, by providing a list of cells that cost more, to, uh, more than a usual cell to enter. Okay, is it clear? Does everyone agree that it sounds super, super simple? Uh, who thinks that he would uh, hand code it in, in less than 15 minutes? In less than 30 minutes? Of course, uh, no generic for specific containers, for specific inputs, for specific types, right? Everyone can solve it. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, so only now we are getting to the uh, to the interesting point. What is graph in boost graph? It is a concept. Uh, we didn't have concepts uh, back in uh, C plus plus ninety eight. We still don't fully have them now. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some. Con but boost already had some meta program in magic to implement concepts so if you try to do some uh, to use something very very wrong as a graph boost will give you an error which is at least partially readable uh, so, um, so concept is, is a set of valid of operations of un on argument basically you have an hierarchy or like you have a certain uh, graphs uh, defined certain concepts defined for graph. Base graph is not very useful. It's just a few type defs. It's uh, what type is used to describe the vertex? What type is this used to describe an edge? Edge in most, ca edge in most cases is just a pair of vertices. But, uh, but you know, you can invent your own implementation. Uh, other graphs require more operation. For example, incidence graph, which will be important for this talk, must provide operations that uh, uh, for, trava for traversing the neighbors, something that sounds that you want for pathfinding, right? So there is a function out edge, out edges that receives the vertex and returns a range of edges, okay? From vertex, a range of pairs of vertices. Uh, uh, we have vertex list graph, which provides a way to uh, to, uh, to iterate uh, over all the vertices in the graph, regardless of adjacency. 
Uh, there are some more concepts which are used, but which uh, and which concept you must satisfy obviously depends on what algorithm you use, right? Just like some algorithms require random access iterators, and some uh, algorithms in STL work with uh, require a forward input iterator, right? It depends on the algorithm. Um, Another important thing, another important thing in uh, Boost Graph is property maps. It's like a universal container uh, which you can get or put uh, from. Uh, or put it put means it's not read only, obviously, uh, because remember we have we need a way to. Uh, to, re to, to return the properties of the edges, the weight, right? And in some, in some representations of our graphs, the weights are stored in some adjacency matrix on, or list. In some, they are calculated from uh, on the fly from some properties of the vertices. So Boost doesn't want to limit the genericity. Implement it however you want. Uh, uh, read only con uh, which is uh, uh, in uh, of input property maps uh, are read only outputs must be writable of course uh, okay let's look at the header at the code um, this is uh, the definition of uh, uh, a star search in boost uh, do you like the number of parameters here? Right? It's short. Uh, the list is short, relatively. Um, so I thought, hey, it's a star dig. It's an extension of dextra, so dextra should be simpler, right? Um, well, here is dextra. Um, I would use a bigger font, but it wouldn't fit, fit on the screen. Okay. Um, BFS is super simple, but you don't see anything that looks like input or output. It, it is a building block for a more complex algorithms. Unfortunately, I hope in STD graph, we will have a different BFS, but it will be hard. <laughs> um, let's start with Dijkstra. Why with Dijkstra? Because I like Dijkstra even so for our uh, chess, move, uh, chess night uh, problem. Uh, a star makes more sense, but I decided to start with the extra, if you forgive me. Okay. So we have a graph. Graph is a vertex incidence graph, which means it provides a way to get a range of edges from, for a given vertex to get to the neighbors. And you have uh, the starting, the start of your path. Also makes sense, right? A predecessor map, it is your main output. It is a property map. So it must implement a put which receives vertex descriptor and the value. And it must uh, implement the get, of course. Distance map, also a property, also a property map, distance to a given point. Weight map. Uh, this is the input. It is the cost uh, to move between uh, two vertices. Uh, what is nice uh, that uh, Boost Graph provides a lot of different uh, uh, pre-implemented uh, maps, uh, which are adapters for uh, STL con and Boost uh, containers uh, of, uh, that uh, make it simpler. For example, you want uh, weight of everything to be one. You have a property map which is a constant. You want to use uh, we want to you want to use an unordered map uh, for weights. Uh, sure, it works. You have an adapter for this. So at least this you don't need to uh, vertex index map. Unfortunately, you need uh, to provide a way to. Uh, uh, to convert uh, the vertex descriptor, the coordinates as we called it, uh, to, a, to an integer from zero to number of vertices in the graph, which means that unfortunately this algorithm can't work with inf infinite graph-like structures. And also you actually need to provide such translation, which could be awkward. Uh, in general, it, it 
is not it's not actually needed by the algorithm itself it is needed by the optimizations of the algorithm to to work better with the priority queue okay you also see in the list of arguments compare function combine function distance infinite distance zero and you hope that, sh that sh there should be an overload that provides a reasonable difference right that's what you hope when you see it uh, um, another curious argument argument is the d extra visitor it is something that absorbs the search process and it will be called uh, in certain moments uh, during the search and you have a color map remember we needed a container to store the search pro pro process information uh, we talked about night on the board board is a grid right so if you search uh, boost graph documentation for grid you see there is a grid graph which takes as uh, which takes a size uh, as a uh, template argument which is a uh, number of dimensions and it looks like something that you want right so you have a grid graph of two right uh, what is so nice in it it provides all the necessary all all the functions needed from your concept okay it has it provide it implements uh, functions to count vertices to iterate over all vertices function to get adjacent nodes uh, fun, uh, maps indices, indices to coordinates like sounds everything like everything that we need right uh, by default adjacency is horizontal or vertical only no no nights move we will need to handle it later because that's we don't want to find pass on uh, on us with such adjacency rules you can find it by simple uh, sub, uh, subtraction, subtraction right uh, but i talked too much uh, uh, here is a call to a function from boost graph which actually compiled for me okay um, so we have this grid graph some details omitted uh, and uh, we have uh, this awesome call so we provide we provide this graph which which means that it satisfies the required concepts it has functions to do all the cool stuff with vertices and edges uh, I defined somewhere somewhere else uh, a starting vertex. Uh, the predecessor map, uh, I, uh, you could use a, a property map adapter for a, for a hash map to store uh, the output. Same for distance map. And I used constant weight. Again, we have a property map adapter. Then, okay, then I copy pasted something from somewhere, okay? And uh, you, you see all the kinds of std less, uh, you see closed plus, you know, all the things that you would expect that uh, there, is a, there is a good uh, overload that provides good defaults for, right? Uh, so why didn't I use it? Okay. Uh, at first, I actually used it. And when I used the boost graph, uh, ah, and of course, it compiled it uh, gave uh, the result but not for a night move it was a uh, basically x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 which makes sense right a model of course it makes sense if it's not a night move so it's working um uh, the way to, the way overloads in boost graph library work is called oh i should have placed some uh, i should have placed some uh, snippets here so just believe me that it's uh, that's how it works. Uh, you have uh, something they try to provide a way uh, to give uh, named parameters like in Python. So you can omit uh, the parameters from the middle of the list if it is default. Yeah, sounds nice. Everyone likes everyone here is like uh, loves Python, right? So you have five arguments. Everyone has a good name. You want second and fourth to be default. The rest you want to provide. It works great in Python. It doesn't work uh, in C++, right? Uh, okay. 
it, uh, you can give some defaults from the to something at the end. Uh, so they said, hey, we, we will use a lot of tricky meta programming. Sorry, I'm not an expert on it. And uh, the way it works is when it works, it's really cool. You say, hey, I want to provide default. Uh, I want to provide default parameters to this boost, uh, boost, uh, boost graph function. And then in a syntax that looks like a builder, you provide everything that is not default. You say, hey, use default parameter, but dot pmap, you give it a pmap. Dot dmap, you give it a dmap. And for some reason you want, uh, instead of plus to combine distances, you want a plus that also round to the nearest multiple of five. You also override this, everything else is default, okay? Sounds cool, cool on paper. Worked for me when I used original grid graph. When I tried a lazy solution to implement Knight's move by simply subclassing from grid graph to, uh, uh, from the grid graph and implementing my own function that returns the range of edges adjacent, adjacent to a certain vertex, it gave me a, it gave me a template error message longer than my life. I don't know, I didn't know how to implement it. So I say, hey, what if I use the full function and copy pasting the defaults from the overload that uses, uh, that uses uh, boost uh, parameter library work, it compiled. Uh, using uh, the overload that uses uh, boost parameter library on with a graph sub with a subclass graph didn't work didn't work in uh, in with visual compiler didn't work with gcc so uh, probably and uh, the error message was equally long and uh, hard to read so nice um, so as we told there is no simple night's move uh, I saw that maybe the actual logic for finding the neighbors in grid could work, but it didn't work because it was a generic solution for uh, n-dimensional grids. So you have uh, two, uh, two multiplied by n neighbors, unless you are on the edge. In this case, you have less, and they used counting iterators and transform iterators. Uh, to calculate the correct uh, distance uh, vector, which simply doesn't work with night moves uh, because it's different. So I subclassed from grid graph, and after I switched to calling the with full list of arguments and not with property maps. Uh, no, sorry, with parameter, not the overload with parameter library. It actually compiled. Then I said, hey, my grid, now we I want- have, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Is, mm -hmm. is subgraphing the recommended way for using- Oh, the... okay. I tried to find the, I, I tried to look uh, some things in, uh, Boost library, and they didn't find the recommended way. There were some example, uh, some examples with uh, uh, using the uh, grid graphs, but none of them wanted to implement adjacency uh, rules like uh, Knight's move uh, and uh, or uh, or uh, for example hexagonal grid. So I said I'm lazy. Uh, I need to the this the, the required graph concept is huge. I don't want to implement everything. I am I will do something lazy and see whether it compiles. Okay. Uh, because uh, usually when you have so many template parameters, it comes instead of subclass. Very interesting. Yes. <coughs> well, sub, uh, as you already heard, subclass didn't work perfectly, but it, it, it did work eventually. And if there is, and if there was an expert on, on this library, he would probably say, "Wow, that's horrible." But this is the natural idea that comes to you after you try to understand this documentation. Uh, well, maybe. Oh. 
Oh, sorry. I have a, a short question. I don't know if you're going to reach it later. I was just wondering if you tried to do weight, to give weight of infinite to the, like, have you tried giving a weight uh, uh, table or is it coming later? I'm not sure. Uh, like, giving given infinite. Weight, given weight table is the most straightforward thing. I didn't even put a snippet for it because this is among the parts that are explained well in the documentation and actually work well. Hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so in the original solution, I just used uh, I just used the constant weight table, which is a property map that always returns one. But you can use uh, a different adapter to say return according to the value in this unordered map. Or in theory, you could implement your own. It is just capture some container and implement uh, get, impl implement get, and implement uh, square braces. Uh, this is among the things that work, worked well. Okay, cool. Uh, so what do we want to do? Uh, so I have this mean minimum night moves function which uh, provides the list of possible of legal moves for a knight right okay uh, one and two in any direction right eight total looks good uh, so i want my graph to accept a list of moves and use this list of moves so uh, so i will be also able uh, to use uh, it for, for example, hexagonal grid with slightly different adjacency rules, right? But it looks like uh, the most natural way to represent it, right? So you, if you want to be generic and you want to, uh, to support any displacement, like any distance between on, on a grid, uh, this looks simple, of course. Uh, of course, it's maybe too simple by some uh, grid graphs, like if you have different chess pieces, which can be blocked, it's, it would be different. But for now, it's good enough. Uh, so, and I, and I said, okay, my graph will accept uh, the size of the board, of course, and uh, the range of, of legal moves as construction argument, okay? So this is straightforward enough, right? Or not? Uh, because you can't do it any simpler. I hope, at, the, at least I think so. So we have uh, the graph, which inherits from grid graph, um, and uh, whatever was given in construction, whatever is given to constructor, we remember it, okay? because we want to know the neighbors. And the most important function, out edges, it receives a, it receives a, it receives a vertex uh, and uh, it uh, re returns a range of edges. And edges of, uh, edges a pair of vertices, okay? A pair of vertices. This is, uh, so what is, uh, what do we have here? Uh, the uh, the, vert, uh, the iterator when dereferenced uh, should return uh, should return a pair of vertices. Uh, so we store a pair of vertices. I store a pair of vertices inside the iterator. There could be a better solution, but uh, this one looked the easy, the simplest. Uh, the the start the start vertex is of course uh, always the vertex that we are we are looking the edges from it okay if you say give me all the neighbors of a all the then all the edges start with a uh, and uh, and the second will change so i create out edge iterator which remembers the start vertex also, also receives uh, the legal the range of legal moves and dimensions to check that you are not outside of the board. Uh, 
uh, we will get to it in one more slide because the incidence uh, uh, graph concept requires that you implement uh, not only out edges function but also the out degree function the number of neighbors uh, so and the boost documentation says that the dextra must uh, receives uh, the graph of uh, uh, that uh, must satisfy incidence graph uh, incidence graph uh, concept but requiring out degree from algorithms that is uh, that doesn't need it like a dextra doesn't make sense uh, so i said hey i don't want out degree from the original grid graph to be called uh, so i will uh, write i will provide my own that will throw in case it's called it was never called so maybe the requirement for arguments for a certain graph algorithms in boost could be relaxed okay uh, so now let's get to the out edge iterator again okay here is a small bug but i was too lazy to fix it sorry it's like a forward iterator you go over all edges and i should have marked this read only but i didn't uh, this is uh, so basically i have a member for edge as i told the first is always the vertex we are looking for uh, the na for neighbors of and uh, the second will change every time we do a plus, uh, we make a plus plus right uh, uh, so uh, and the function I actually called is for the second part of the edge just do you see my cursor right mm -hmm. do you see my cursor yes uh, for the second part of the edge you try to advance it by the current Post, uh, current night move it is a if it is a valid co uh, coordinate great nothing to do if it's not a valid coordinate try next if you reach the end you reach the end that's it uh, and valid coordinate for now just checks the edges of the board okay uh, so this function is called from plus plus and this function is called from constructor itself because you want to find the you want to start with the first uh, edge and i and uh, the deref and the iterator dereference just returns mm -hmm. this edge okay um, so it actually worked it's surprisingly it even passed some unit tests uh, so uh, there could be so what else could, could we add to add to it and what we could learn from it for example we could mark some positions as unreachable there are friendly pieces that night cannot move through uh, for this we will extract the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the method that validates coordinate to an external call a callable uh, if we want to terminate upon reaching certain distance uh, it will be uh, much more curious and you no know, perhaps we want to add a way to uh, like somebody says that some cells are more, uh, more expensive it is super easy just use a weight map uh, if if you want a certain edges to be more expensive it is a simple adapter for uh, for a hash table if you want uh, it to be based, for example, solely on destination, it is easy to create your own. You just need to implement the get. Just take a wrapper to, a con to your container or whatever, uh, do your calculations, return the get. So a possible way to, uh, to do it is to extract bounds validator to a, to a callable and the right operator braces performs the validation that vertex coordinates are valid and you could use this as a default for example or for a square board and you could uh, use a different logic for uh, if you if some points are unreachable well write a struct like this 
but which takes a list of unreachable points. If you need, for example, a hexagonal board, well, this check will be slightly different. But the uh, but uh, the case that the graph uh, uh, the graph itself because this is where the logic for finding the, uh, the next uh, neighbor is uh, found will uh, can just receive it as argument okay it's just a callable uh, but uh, the case with uh, a terminating up, uh, upon reaching a certain distance is, is interesting in theory you have something remember there was a parameter called visitor it's a very cool parameter uh, in fact uh, Dijkstra is implemented as visitor of BFS. Okay, nice, right? Uh, so visitor has methods that are called uh, when certain events happen, when you first discover a vertex, when you finalize a vertex and everything in between. Uh, it can serve, for example, to collect out, for example, in the, ga in the video game from the second slide, uh, uh, you could see that uh, cells reachable within certain distance are marked in one color, cells reachable within double this distance are marked in another color, and everything outside is, ma is not marked. Uh, so you could, for example, have a visitor that uh, when you finalize a certain node, puts it in a, in a correct bin, right? So this sounds... Well, I have a typos here, but whatever. Uh, so this sounds very straightforward. Uh, but the curious part is that uh, all the functions in visitor return void. They don't return anything. So how do you terminate? This is the funny part. This is the fun part. Uh, because I looked at both documentation, and this is what I found. So you have a star goal visitor, which is a which, in, which inherits from default a star visitor and it has a function examine vertex and if we reach the goal it throws an exception found goal okay so what is funny here is that uh, boost documentation gives us an example of using exceptions for a normal non-exceptional control flow isn't it cool no uh, okay, you have a question? No, I think he just uh, forgot his hand up uh, ah. out of shock from what you just showed. Okay. No, he said if we have questions, I said no, no questions. This is, uh, no. This is uh, trust me, this is taken from both documentation, this example. This is how you, uh, this is how you stop the extra search prematurely okay uh, uh, okay let's talk about alternatives there is a library called lemon sometimes the syntax is less annoying the algorithm set is smaller there is no a star for example the iterators there are super weird it's not that you dereference the iterator to get the value it is implicitly castable to value uh, because uh, it makes it lo look much, much better, but it's, it is super weird to read. Uh, they claim that by most, in most uh, cases, by their benchmarks, they are faster than boost. Could be. There is also something called uh, LEDA, which is commercial. It uh, contains algorithms for basically everything. It's a huge, it's a huge library. Not just graphs, also all the comp compressions algorithms, for example, or whatnot. I didn't understand the documentation. Maybe to get better documentation, you need to pay for a commercial support. I don't know. Um, okay, and. Uh, Okay, in Bar already sent a link to latest uh, 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 STD graph proposal in the chat. Uh, currently, it is under discussion. There is no working implementation. There is no final agreement on the key, even on the key concept. It doesn't seem that they are finalized. 
In general, the, the authors of the proposal learned a lot from uh, Boost's uh, graph library and want to make it simpler. What also makes it simpler is that it's used, it is for C20 and not for C98. So at least you have a standard uh, unordered map uh, and not was, uh, which wasn't, uh, which couldn't be taken for given uh, back then. Or you have lambdas, uh, so um, perhaps your property maps should be uh, just callables and not uh, something different, which is, uh, so this is work in progress. Uh, you're free. If you want, you can read it, you can leave comments, uh, but it wouldn't be out anytime soon. Uh, so what is great about Boost uh, uh, Graph Library? You, it's generic. You can uh, adapt every data structure to work with algorithms from Boost Graph Library. Like in, uh, you need to provide a property map, you need to provide graphs. Graph is a set of functions that like out uh, edges and different functions for different algorithms. So, it's uh, totally generic. Uh, some parts are implemented in simplest way, and uh, and there are a lot of algorithms. Like everything graph you could see think about is uh, there. You need topological sort, it is there. You need uh, the extra search, it is there. Uh, some algorithms are easy to use, which is good. Header only, which is uh, also good in many cases. Uh, so, and most important, it is tested. So, uh, the chance of the chance of bugs in your implementation when you code uh, the search uh, yourself uh, in thirty minutes and then fix it and then fix it uh, fix the bugs uh, for uh, three hours and uh, stop when it passes one the one test that you wrote. It is. Uh, uh, this one is actually tested by more people, so it's uh, so you have some trust in it, right? And it is kind of standard because it's boost. Uh, the, now the desired. Uh, some parts of the documentations were, conf were rather confusing. Uh, the part about uh, of the part about. Uh, a boost parameter library, which should give alternative, uh, which should provide alter, uh, alter, uh, the named parameters instead of overloads. It's very tricky to use. Do something wrong, you get an error message that you will never understand, unless you are the author of the library, maybe. Uh, when you see an example that uses exception in a normal, non exceptional, uh, 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 flow it in, as part of the documentation. It is, is it look it is super funny, and uh, makes you raise some questions about the design of this part, this specific part of the library. And there are many minor things like incidence graph is provide is required to provide a number of neighbors of in advance, but many algorithms that require incidence graph don't really need the number of neighbors in advance. So lots of minor stuff like this. Uh, now something, uh, remember uh, I looked at uh, a couple of uh, open source video games and realized that everyone implements their own search instead of using the library. Well, uh, it is much easier to learn to use STD sort and to actually use std sort uh, uh, for the, the one from for generic for any container, then write your own sort for specific, even if you write it for a specific type for a specific container, right? Sort doesn't surprise you, and sort is simple. Uh, one part why sort is simple that the input is simple and output is simple. And remember, for our algorithm, input is tricky. A container of 
a pair of ranges of uh, elements, right? So a dextra is not guilty that it is tricky to use, but it could be easier. It's like most algorithms in STL are easier to use than write your own. Even if you allow yourself to write something for a specific container uh, in hacky way for specific types, uh, for many problems, to, for many problems, uh, and for many input types, PG, uh, Boost Graph library is easier to use than write your own. For example, most algorithms are, are much easier to if you if you are if your prog if for your problem. The natural representation is the adjacency graph provided by Boost itself, is uh, or adjacency matrix uh, provided by Boost itself. Well, it will be relatively easy for you to use it. But for cases like this search and grid, it will be easier to write your own documentations and understand to how to use uh, Boost graph. Uh, well, maybe. After you use it 10 times, the ratio changes, but at first, not so much. Uh, and uh, uh, as, and, uh, as, and uh, what uh, I must say that the STD graph uh, authors learned from this and will hopefully uh, provide us a better uh, library uh, so we can. Uh, uh, so we can uh, have the same library used in all the projects that need pathfinding instead of having custom pathfinding code in every application. Uh, okay. Uh, recommend uh, so recommended reading. Uh, all the lectures by Sean Parent especially the no row loops and no incidental data structures. In the second lecture, he discusses what is the proper way to, uh, what is the proper way to uh, represent a, a tree which is iteratable in a non-surprising way. It's a very good talk. Um, you can look at uh, STD graph proposal. Maybe you can even propose something for it. Uh, and uh, if you want to use a, a boost graph library, uh, you will need to read the online documentation because there is no better documentation. There is a book, but as far as I understand, it's not much ahead of the online documentation. And uh, that's it for now. <laughs>